Welcome back to English 4.0, the radio show. Let's go! Advanced. All right, welcome back. Welcome, advanced students, to advanced class 11. I am back. I am back in body, but my voice is fading fast. I seem to be going a bit hoarse. Afonico, I believe you say in Spanish. I'm going a little bit hoarse today. Um, so I'm going to turn up the volume and turn down. I'm going to keep my voice down a little bit lower. I hope you can hear me all right. We're going to start with a little review of what we saw yesterday in class 10, or in the last class, I should say. Not necessarily yesterday, but in the last class. We talked about uh, every other day, every other week, every other month. And I said yesterday that, for example, I cut my hair every other month. Un mes si, un mes no. We could also say every two months. I buy olive oil every two months. Every other month, I buy olive oil. I go out of Madrid probably every other month. I come to the radio station every other day. Actually, that's not true. I come here almost every single day. I eat pasta every other day. That's true. I would say that I email my brother probably every other day. I don't talk to him very often, but I probably talk to him every other week because he's far away. My brother lives in Malaysia. So I talk to him every other week because he's busy and there's a time difference. There's a significant time difference, I think seven or eight hours. So I don't talk to him very often. I probably talk to him every other week, but I email him every other day. I see my boss every other day. Um, and uh, I do this show every single day. It seems every other show I have a comment, I have questions to answer from students, but today, at least here in the uh, advanced class, there were no, there were no questions. So we're going to move on now to, uh, we talked about sin embargo, no obstante, however, and nevertheless. Basically, what you want to remember here is that we have a, if we have a positive idea, Followed by a negative idea, we use however. I got here on time, however, my student wasn't ready. I had a sore throat, nevertheless, I did the show anyway. That's true. I had a sore throat. I have a sore throat right now. Nevertheless, I'm doing the show. The show must go on, ladies and gentlemen. The show must go on, okay? So I want you to make sure you understand this. I'm going to give you some examples. It was raining we went to the park. So, nevertheless, or however, it was raining. Boo, negative. We went to the park. Yay, positive. So, nevertheless, it was raining. Nevertheless, we went to the park. I felt great. Positive. I couldn't run in the marathon. Boo, negative. Therefore, however, I felt great. However, I couldn't run in the marathon. You weren't paying attention. Negative. Boo. You weren't paying attention. However, well, in fact, well, actually, in this case, you weren't paying attention, which is, which is negative. You answered my question correctly, which is positive. So in this case, nevertheless. You weren't paying attention. Nevertheless, you answered my question correctly. I followed the recipe. Positive. It didn't turn out well. To turn out. It didn't turn out. So to, to have a final outcome or result. It didn't turn out well. I followed the recipe. However, however, it didn't turn out well. That happens sometimes. I, I like to bake. It's true. I like to bake pies and cakes sometimes. And sometimes I follow the recipe and I have a recipe that sometimes works perfectly. But other times, it just doesn't turn out well. The product, the final product, just isn't good. I don't know why, but it doesn't turn out well. I followed the recipe. However, it didn't turn out well. We had to stop for gas. 
We got there on time. We had to stop for gas. Nevertheless, we got there on time. Okay, I read the article. I didn't understand the details. I read the article. However, I didn't understand the details. Good. Let's try another one. Um, I worked hard. I couldn't finish on time. I worked hard. However, I couldn't finish on time. Okay, do you understand? Good. Let's move on. And if you have any problems there... There are a few things you can do. Of course, you're always reviewing the classes on television, watching the classes on television, listening to the radio, reading in your student guide. And of course, if you have questions after that, or if you just want to say hello, log on to www.bauganingles.com. Go into your account and send us a question, send us a comment, feedback. Ask us something. We will answer it. That's what we're here for. I am here to teach you English. I'm here to help you. I want you to learn. So please ask me. Ask us questions and we will answer you. We are here to help you. Okay? Expression of the day. Yes, it's time for the expression of the day. The expression of the day. The expression of the day today is to bear fruit. To bear fruit. So to, to bear fruit, it, well, we have the verb to bear, which is essentially to produce, like to, be, like to bear children. Or, when, when, uh, or, or if, if a plant flowers, it can bear, or it, it, it provides fruit, like an apple tree bears fruit. It provides fruit. But the expression to bear fruit means to give a reward. After hard work, your hard work will pay off. Your hard work will bear fruit. If you study, your effort will bear fruit. It will be fruitful. It will bear fruit. It will give you the reward of learning English. So to bear fruit is to to provide a reward or to to have a a reward made available as a result of your effort. So... Something you do can bear fruit. If you know some some things don't bear fruit. Sometimes you work very hard, but your efforts are fruitless. We could say, and your efforts do not bear fruit. But your effort to learn English, I promise you, will bear fruit if you study, if you make the effort. You have to make the effort. You have to work hard. It's like everything. That's the key. That's the key to to being successful in life, I think, really. You just have to decide what you want, and you have to go get it. You have to work hard. And your efforts will bear fruit if you work hard. Okay? So there you go, the expression of the day, to bear fruit. Now let's go ahead, looking at the accusative with some questions. This is a structure that I have practiced and practiced and practiced with my students, teaching them over and over, because it bothers me when I hear mistakes with this, okay? I do not want to hear anyone say the word that in, this, in, in their response, okay? Because here, ask me if I want him to come. Do you want him to come? You do not say, do you want that he comes? No, 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 no. Do you want him to come? Okay, I can say, my boss wants me to work hard. He wants me to work hard. Subject want infinitive to, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, subject want uh, wants object to infinitive. Okay, he wants me to work hard. He wants me to produce good radio shows. I want you to listen. I want you to learn. Do you want me to speak English or Spanish? You want me to speak English. That's right. I want you to pay attention. I want you to learn. Okay? I want you to watch the TV. I want you to listen to the radio. I want you to learn. I want you to practice. I want you to respond out loud. Okay? Ask me if I want my family to be happy. Do you want your family to be happy? Well, yes, I do. Of course, I want my family to be happy. Ask me if they want me to speak English. Do they want you to speak English? Yes, 
They want me to speak English. Ask me if Batman wants Robin to help him. Do you remember Batman and Robin? Robin is sort of his assistant there. Ask me if Batman wants Robin to help him. Does Batman want Robin to help him? Very good. And also in the past, ask me if Batman wanted Robin to help him. Did Batman want Robin to help him? Very good. Does ba- does uh, does Ben want Jerry to make more ice cream? You know Ben and Jerry's ice cream. I love it. Does Ben want Jerry to make more ice cream? Yes. Ben wants Jerry to make more ice cream. Did Ben want Jerry to make more ice cream yesterday? Yes. Ben wanted Jerry to make more ice cream yesterday. Do you want me to speak with a Mississippi accent? No. No. No, Kyle. I don't want you to speak with a Mississippi accent. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue speaking with my Canadian accent. Yes, yes, yes. Ask me if I want te- the teachers to speak in their native accents. Do you want the teachers to speak in their native accents? Well, yes, I do. I think it's best for the teachers to all speak in their native accents. Ask me if my boss wants me to work more hours. Does your boss want you to work more hours? Maybe. Yes, I think he does. I think my boss wants me to work more hours. They're always asking me to work more and more hours, but it's good. It's good to be busy. Ask me if I want you to study your student guide. Kyle, do you want me to study my student guide? Repeat with me out loud and both out out loud. Do you want me to study with my student guide? Yes. I want you to study with your student guide. Do you know who at home do you, do you know who Buzz Aldrin is? Buzz Aldrin. Buzz Aldrin is the second man to go to the moon. Everybody knows Neil Armstrong, the first man to go to the moon, Neil Armstrong. But do you know who Buzz Aldrin is? Maybe you do, but a lot of people don't. And it must be, I don't know, it must be a bit frustrating to be Buzz Aldrin, to be number two, to be almost the first man to walk on the moon, but not quite. Neil Armstrong gets all the credit, and Buzz Aldrin did everything the same, except Neil Armstrong touched the moon a little bit before he did. So ask me if Buzz Aldrin wants Neil Armstrong to take all the credit. Kyle, does Buzz Aldrin want Neil Armstrong to take all the credit? Probably not. I don't think. I I think Buzz Aldrin does not want Neil Armstrong to take all the credit. I think Buzz Aldrin wants to get some of the credit himself. And I suppose we could understand him. Okay. Ask me if McCartney wanted Lennon to break up with Yoko Ono. Did McCartney want Lennon to break up with Yoko Ono? Yes, he did. Paul McCartney wanted John Lennon to break up with Yoko Ono. Absolutely. Ask me if my mother wants me to be happy. Does your mother want you to be happy? Yes, of course she does. Absolutely. Vocabulary of the day. All right, time now for the vocabulary of the day. A causa de. On account of. It's essentially like saying because of, but we can say on account of. On account of the weather, we stayed at home. On account of. On account of. En rebajas. En rebajas. On sale. On sale. To be on sale. Yes. Everything seems to be on sale after Christmas, and at the end of the summer. Molestar. To annoy. To annoy. To annoy. Be careful you don't say molest, because to molest in English is uh, abusar sexualmente de alguien. So don't confuse that, okay? Molestar is to annoy. If people are out in the hallway, I'm trying to make the radio show, I'm trying to record the show... And people are making noise, they sometimes, a little bit, they annoy me. 
Well, I don't really mind. I don't really care, but I suppose it could be annoying. Okay? Engañar. Engañar. To deceive. To deceive. Very good. Deceive. Quedarse dormido. To fall asleep. To fall asleep. That's right. To fall asleep. To fall asleep. Very good. Okay, now on to part three of the class where we're looking at the structure is the same as. Is the same as. But we're going to look at fractions and percentages. And the structure is the same as. So grammatically, what's important here is is the same as, not that or than. So before we look at the fractions and percentages, I can say, for example, my pen is the same as his pen, right? My microphone is the same as Alberto's microphone. My watch is not the same as his watch. My shirt is not the same as his shirt. But my phone is the same as his phone, okay? Now, with fractions and percentages, we can say that one half is the same as 50%. Repeat, one half is the same as 50%. One quarter, one quarter is the same as 25%. That's right. Okay, I'm going to test your mathematical abilities a little bit here. One third, one third, one over three, but we say one third is the same as SOS, 33.3%. 33.3%. And now 75% is the same as three quarters. Notice how I say three quarters. One quarter is the same as 25%. Three quarters is the same as. So three quarters with an S. But I still say is the same as. It's like saying X is the same as Y. Three quarters is the same as 75%. Two thirds is the same as 66.7%. Repeat. Two thirds is the same as 66.7%. One tenth. So we have, to, we have to know the pronunciation of the ordinal numbers here. One tenth. With my tongue out. One tenth is the same as 10%. One eighth, one eighth is the same as 12.5%. Seven eighths, seven eighths, seven eighths is the same as 87.5%. Two fifths at home, two fifths, two fifths is the same as 40%. Repeat, two fifths is the same as 40%. Is the same as, is the same as. Always, okay? The pronunciation is always the same. It is the same as. Five-eighths is the same as 62.5%. And, folks, we are completely out of time. So thank you so much for listening tomorrow. Same time, same place. My name's Kyle Miller. See you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>